Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on out there? How y'all doing? How y'all doing, everybody? Round of applause. Oh, my God. Welcome back to Bobby's Block Podcast. You are the best audience in the goddamn world. Shout out to everybody listening, wherever you might be from. Um, we got a really, really great show for you today. I got a really great show for you today. Lots to talk about, man. A lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, it's been a little minute. It's been a lot of action going on in my life. Um, so I am going to get a little rundown, man. Of, of, uh, of what we got today man uh yes if you follow me closely on social media uh, i did post on my instagram and my tiktok uh the video because i did get pulled on kill tony again all right round of applause right there yeah but um being as they tape a couple weeks ahead i've decided that i'm not going to talk about that yet because y'all can't go watch it uh, I, I hate. I would hate to do that early, and then when it comes out in a couple weeks, I'm like, oh, I've already talked about it, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to talk about it when the episode drops. That way, you know, y'all can just run to it right after or before or during and um, check out how I did on the show. Um, I also will be on live on YouTube doing a live reaction to it when I, um, when I see the video. So I'm going to be on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Bobby B T V. All right. B T V Bobby B T V on YouTube. Um, and I got to thank y'all out there real quick, man, before we even get started with the show, your boy's making money from YouTube now, man. Uh, y'all watching the videos and y'all sharing these videos. I'm actually earning a couple dollars uh, on, on the back end of that. Finally, after six years of posting them for free all the time uh so i love y'all i appreciate y'all please keep checking out the videos um share to your friends i put up some new comedy clips on there um and i got some some other ones coming too man um <clears throat> But we got a great show for y'all today, man. Like I said, like I said, I opened for, uh, I got to open for for a movie star this weekend, man. A big, big comedian named Lil Rel Howery. Uh, Lil Rel is what he goes by. Uh, if you don't know the name, if you're not familiar with the name, you've seen his face hundreds of times, man. He's a, He's been in Get Out. He was in uh, Bird Box on Netflix. I saw him in the Carmichael show. Uh, he was in, he was in like Broommates, Broommate, that roommate movie. Um He's been in a lot of stuff, man. Just very, very super accomplished dude. He was real nice to me. Shout out to Cap City, man. But yeah, four, four souls over there uh, this weekend. Great. I made the biggest check of my comedy career. So another round of applause, man. Uh, things are progressing for me, guys. Things are fucking going great, man. Uh, Trump got shot at. Obviously, we're going to talk about that, man. <laughs> it's, it, the world is crazy right now, man. I'm having a great time in life, and uh, I'm happy. I'm happy that y'all are here with me, man. Um, YouTube, give us a second, man. Let's vibe. Let's vibe. Let's turn up in here, man, real quick. Let's get us a little vibe going. I don't even know where to cut it. You can't cut this off, right? It's whatever, 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 whatever. whatever. <laughs> Yeah, we in a good mood, man. We in a good mood. Shout out to everybody for listening to the podcast. Obviously, the ladies, the fellas, man. Gang, gang. Um, where do I even want to start, man? Um, that we honestly, uh, Trump got shot at, guys. This is crazy. Donald Trump got shot. Well, he got shot. First of all, all right. I guess I'll start this here. Everyone's talking about it already. Donald Trump was doing a a, a rally in somewhere in the middle of white America. Uh, <laughs> I didn't research none of this, by the way. I'm giving y'all raw, unfiltered thoughts off the dome today, <laughs> okay? Um, from the video I saw, but yeah, everyone saw the video. You know what happened, man. Uh, uh, he's on the podium. He looks He looks like to the right or whatever, and then, you know, you hear, you hear shots starting to pop off at the Trump rally, man. And uh, Secret Service reacts slow as hell, you know what I'm saying? But but he grabs for his ear, and I and I was like, oh, shit, man. I don't know, like, I don't even know what's I, – I, I have no idea because, like, he's on the ground. So I didn't know if he was living or, or, or not down there. Man, everybody – like, where were you? Think about it. Where were you? What were you doing when you, when you heard that Trump got shot? <laughs> yeah, that's the new question. Everyone's always like, "Where were you during nine eleven? Where were you during? Uh, uh, where were you during the potato famine uh, of Ireland? You know, where were you during Wall Street, Wolf of Wall Street, whatever? I don't know what they was talking about when I was young. I don't know. Um, but duh, I, I, I honestly, it was just wild. I, I think this is what this happened while I was at work at the airport. I had a lady in a wheelchair, and she was on her iPad scrolling through. Uh, it was like Bing or some shit. Old lady, by the way, she's still using Bing in in the airport. 
So she's on Bing News, and I, it pops up on fucking Bing.com of all things that I saw, which was absolutely insane. So she's playing a video. She starts smiling. She was happy. This lady was like, 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 like she was in on it. But no, nah, so so I see the video. And uh, he actually comes back up. He's like ears bleeding or whatever, whatever's going on. And he does the he does the, the 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 black panther fist in the air thing, man. But with a white fist. And listen, man. So it might be over for the black fist. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. That Olympics with the Olymp- with the glove and the fist and the head down. That's a hard picture. But Trump with the bloody face and his white fist in the air holding up that picture. Is about to be in history, history books forever. That picture gonna be a DBQ, <laughs> all right. That picture gonna be a DBQ for people like me to 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 not turn in on time and sleep and wait till the last minute to turn in. But it's gonna be in there. Crazy. Got shot in the ear, man. And you know what I think? I think I think him getting shot in the ear. I think he. I don't even like saying he got shot. He got shot a little bit. You know, Donald Trump got shot a little bit. It wasn't like he got, like it was like, you know, through the shoulder, in the leg, or, or you know, whatever. He got shot in like the 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 ear lobe, the ear piercing lobe. The, you know, the, the the shit that people be getting in the mall. Like it was the same amount of blood as when, as when they mess you up in the mall. It's like when you go to the mall and you try to get your ears pierced at an Auntie Annie's. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's how that's how it looks. You know? I would say he got shot a little bit. However, I already he's about to milk this for for literally everything it's worth. I don't see any way that he loses now. This this is about to propel him to the top. It was crazy because he only got shot a little bit, but he's about to make it seem like he got, oh, I, like he got, everyone's calling him 50 Cent. Like, oh, he just survived. No, 50 Cent survived nine shots, a couple in the face. It was a bullet in his tongue. Trump got shot a little bit, you know. Survived. That's like, uh, that's like your homeboy. <laughs> like, 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 okay, perfect. That's like, that's like when you was growing up or whatever. You know, like hey, you, you want to fit in with the boys. You want to be hard. You want to be cool. You want to be down with gang. All your homeboys lost their virginity and shit. You know, that's like that's like somebody telling their homeboys they lost their virginity when it was just a hand job. You know, it's like like yeah, maybe, but it was only a little bit. You know, I don't know. Everyone's saying it's set up. It was a setup. It was a fake. It was a it was a ruse. I I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. If I'm being honest with y'all, I don't think this was a setup. I know. I and I could. I could. I maybe I could see, like it just you know Trump's a whole like reality TV star. Da, 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 da. But I really, you know, yeah, yeah. Reality people like like Chris Jenner, they set up scenarios like this for them to look good to gain back from the public. You know. And I've been watching House of Dragons. That was, that was an auto move. You know. Your your grace, maybe we maybe we need to shoot you a little bit in front of the public to get to get your sympathy back on our side. You know? We'll get the public sympathy back on our side. Um Executed to a T, man. Whether it was planned or not, I don't think it was staged though, man, because I can't see Trump being willing to 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 take a bullet anywhere. You know? Imagine you go to Trump and be like, hey man, uh if you wanna like you know, how about we how about we shoot you? He's like, what? He's like, he's like, what plans we got this year, guys? We we about to beat Joe ass easily. You saw what I did to him on the, on the debate, and they're like, how about we shoot you, Donald? I can't see him saying, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just can't see it, man. So I really can't believe though that I, I I'm I lived through an assassination attempt on a president. And I don't even, I, I ain't going to be real, I'm going to be real with y'all. I really don't know all the presidents that have been in my lifetime. I don't know who got assassinated or not uh, in my lifetime. I was born in 1998. Do your Googles, do your knowledge, uh, and and whatever. But it, it, it was just crazy, man. <clears throat> On the good news, man, I'm opening up for movie stars, man. Round of applause, man. There's some air horns, man. I got to shout out Lil Rel, man. 
This was this was an incredible weekend, man. This was probably one of the best weekends I've had in my career. Um, shout out to Cap City, man. So we it was, uh, it was four shows here in Austin, Texas. Lil Rel came through, and I had never seen him live before, so I was excited. And um, when when they reached out to me, I was really happy because uh, I didn't even know that they they showed him my tape or anything. You know, um, I, I just got a text and it was like, "Hey, Lil Rel really likes your tape. He wants you to open for him. Are you available? Hell yeah, I'm available." I, I'll I'll get there, and it was a Friday. It was it was Friday and Saturday too. So I'm working at the airport. You know, I'm I, I get home at maybe one o'clock, go to work at at four thirty, get there at five, and then I, you know it's whatever. It's back to the grind at night. But I was living my dream this weekend. It was crazy, man. I I won't lie. This is the most nervous I've probably been for shows in a long time, though, because it was just a two man show the whole time. Um, so I get there, and I'm expecting. I'm expecting there to be other people, you know? So I get there, and it's just me. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's you, and then you bring up rail. And I'm like, oh, oh, shit, okay, well, how much time am I doing, you know? And, and I don't, that that just what made me anxious more um, because a two-man show is more the pressure on you. You know, you go on first, you open it up, it's more the pressure on you, you know? And, and uh I ain't. I bodied it this weekend, man. I I I'm back, man. I lost my confidence a little bit in comedy doing sometimes, but I had some. I'm at, my new jokes is rocking that I've been working on in a real crowd on a real stage. They're actually rocking, um, man. And and I you know I've tightened up the set and stuff. I did 23 minutes on one of these shows, and I think that and I still had like four jokes left that I that I didn't even do just because I didn't have time I didn't even do my best joke on that show the first show of the weekend and I was really upset about it too the Nickelodeon joke um but uh it was just man like it was an incredible weekend man I think I think I'm back man and and just watching rail rail was really funny man he was really funny. He had some jokes that had me dying and just, you know, little taglines that, that he would put in the middle of a joke that's getting the same pop as a punchline. Like, that was crazy. I think I think watching that and, like, just the experience I had, man, being, being you know, you get you get four shows back-to-back -back on, you know, 300 people in the room and they say, okay, they say, hey, Bobby, rock out for, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. Do what you do, you know. I, I think I really got to, to tighten up my stuff, and and I know that I got I got a really really funny half hour, man, that I can turn into an hour soon. So, uh, shout out to everybody who was showing love at the show, man. This this was incredible. This was amazing. I'm really grateful. Hopefully, I didn't. I would. I should have asked them if I could be in a movie. We didn't really talk a lot, a lot, a lot because uh you know what he just seems he was he was he was like me kind of he was like he was quiet he's on his phone he's chilling on the comfortable couch that's me when i go to a party you find me at a party i'm, I'm sitting down somewhere i'm quiet i got a bear in my hand not even a bear i got a mango white claw because that's my that's my drink mango white claw by the way if you want to sponsor me white claw you absolutely can um but it was just a great time, man. I'm living my dreams doing comedy right now, man. And then those four shows so far the biggest check I've got doing uh doing comedy in my career. So uh shout out to shout out to Rail and the audience he built. Shout out to the club for trusting me and putting me on, man. And uh shout out to y'all for believing in me and rocking with the pod, bro. Uh you can always help support the podcast too, by the way. Uh there's a link in the in the description right there. Uh so you can donate one dollar, three dollars, five dollars, eight dollars, ten dollars anything helps go into this podcast to up to production value help me get these playing tickets to go do shows and continue building you know my comedy career um i do have a new website too i made a new link tree it's also in the bio so you can sign up for my vip list vip gang you know and um that you know that'll just let you know whenever i'm doing shows or what when i get booked on where i'm popping up at and let me know where y'all are so i can finally start planning to come out and do these you know small rooms and bar shows and and kind of start my own little tour thing that uh that i'm trying to get going you know what i mean um oh yeah as you can tell if you're watching this video uh I'll circle back to more shows later. I, I'm back. I am in my apartment. I'm in the living room recording this episode uh, because your boy got banned from the amazing studio that we have been using for the last three episodes. Oh, my gosh, man. Yeah, I got banned again. I don't know what's with. Why do I, I keep getting banned from places here in Austin? And I'm not doing anything on purpose. All right. I'm trying my hardest to be what, you know, whatever. 
It was Karen. Uh, this is my first experience with some real deal Karens. Although I got banned because it was me and White Cam recording the last episode of the podcast there, and I won't lie to y'all. I we were on the, like the thirty fifth floor. I didn't feel like going all the way back downstairs, so I, I I rolled a joint and then I walked outside by the pool and I smoked the joint by the pool to get my energy up and get ready for the pod. Right, hour and forty five minutes later, not even right after. Not even right after. An hour and 45 minutes later, we had already recorded the whole episode. We had already finished and did everything. Two white ladies running upstairs. Oh, my God. Like, like, I mean, I don't know, upstairs. Came up. Uh, they they bust in the podcast room. Oh, my God. Like, you guys got to go. You have to get out of here right now. It smells like weed all in this hallway. Like, oh, my God. Like the, the elevator, the hallways, the pool. Like, it stinks. It reeks in here. And I'm like, ma'am, like, calm down. Calm down. By the way, she's not saying any of this to me. She's only directing her anger at White Camp, <laughs> who had no idea. He didn't even smoke. He doesn't even smoke with me. Uh, he he wasn't even the one who set up the studio or anything. He had never been there before. It was the first time he was there. But she was only talking to him. And I'm telling her, ma'am, like you can talk to me. I I know what's going. I please, you know what's going. Oh, I get it. You're upset. I'm sorry. And it did not even smell like weed in the hallways. I smoked outside by the pool, and then I walked into the podcast studio. Yes, the podcast studio definitely smelled like weed. I won't lie about that. But um. Uh, yeah, so now you know I'm I'm back potting in like the good old days. We back in the apartment and uh, you know Golden Gage, you know. But I'll find another studio soon, guys, and this will be great. <laughs> we'll return back. I'll decorate some stuff, even though I'm literally moving out of here in like another two three months anyway. Um, still trying to figure out where I'm gonna go. If I'm gonna finally make the LA leap or or give this another couple months to keep building my act or whatever, but you know. Um, what else do we got? Oh man, uh, what else? Oh, I'm going back to Jacksonville for the first time, man. All shout out to all the Jackson listeners, man. I'm a, uh, I will, I will be back home for the first time since I really moved out here to Austin. I'm opening for David Lucas. He's going to be at Comedy Zone Jacksonville. You know, you guys know that place very well if you're familiar with this podcast. That's where I kind of pretty much started this podcast uh, and helped kind of elevate it to where it is today, making connections and opening for people and kind of will help me get my career off the ground, which is being a young comic at the Comedy Zone in the back of this, you know, dingy, beautiful, dirty, lovely comedy club. And uh, they just gave me opportunities, and I was just there all the time trying to learn, man. So it's kind of cool being here in Austin. You know, sometimes people go back, and, it's, you know, it's just really nice. Uh, shout out to David. Uh, David Lucas let me open. So I'll be there Friday and Saturday. All right, there's two shows, Friday night and Saturday night. I'm on all of those. Um, he's also there Thursday if you want to go catch the early show of the week. Um, but, yeah, I'm really excited for that. Um, I did a comedy competition. I won a comedy competition, guys. All right. Um, and this is a big deal to me, God dang it, because uh, I did an episode with Cam Bertrand. All right. And uh, we are both doing the funniest person in Austin comedy competition at Cap City. And uh, we both lost in the first round. And I was on this podcast saying how I'll never do another comedy competition. Um, but no, I, there's a show out here called uh, Stone versus Drunk versus Sober. All right. Um, and it was hosted by uh, Carlton Wilcoxon and Hunter Duncan. All right. Um, and the, the concept of the show is pretty much you, is, there's comedians, two on a team. There's two comedians who get really, really high. Two comedians who get really, really drunk. Two comedians who got to stay sober. And you, you, you're, you're a team. You go on stage, you do your set, and the funniest team wins. You know what I'm saying? So uh, the audience votes at the end of the night which team wins and who they like more. And I'm really excited because we won. We fucking won, baby. All right, team drunk. I was on team drunk. You guys know I really don't. I, I don't drink that. I'm a super lightweight man. I I, I had a, I had five white claws at that show, and I have no idea how I was able to to get on stage and and. Even get through my set. It was a whole 10 minutes. And I, I, I haven't even watched the video yet. I don't know if I was slurring my words or whatever. But I was cooking up there, y'all. I was cooking. You know. And that made me feel. I, I was the I was the anchor leg. So I, my, my teammate opened. Shout out to Jake. He also crushed. Um, well, yeah. It was, it was a stone person first. And then my teammate Jake went. And then a sober person went. Uh, uh, and then a stone person went before me. And then I went uh, drunk. 
And then the last sober person went up, Brent Reed, who was also really, really funny. I thought we were going to lose because Brent was crushing after me. Um, and the guy who went in front of me also did good. I got to remember his name, too. Um, but so your boy pulled it off. We won, like, these, like, championship baseball rings. Man, I think these are, like, the Texas Rangers or something. I don't watch baseball. Oh, maybe the Texas uh, Cowboy. Uh, Texas Seagers. Oh, wait. That might just be the ring name. All right, whatever. You get it. I won, goddamn. <laughs> and I'm back. All right, so I'm, I got my confidence back after being deflated of losing in the first round of the, of the funniest person in Austin competition by winning a, a contest drunk. Uh, so uh, I will be getting back in the competition name of comedy. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited for that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> What else has been going on? I got a haircut finally. Uh, I found a barber out here in Austin, a black barber. Man, shout out to my guy, Jordan, man. I finally found a black barber out here, man. And it was not $55 like most of these motherfuckers be charging these days. It was $32. You know what? It was great. It felt, it felt like America was great again when I was getting that $30 haircut right there. America was great again for probably like... You know, a good a good two a good twenty minutes while I was getting my chop. You know what I'm saying? And I will go back. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited for that. That was great. That was great. The feeling of finding a new barber that you just that you just bond with. It's like it's like House of Dragons when they get a dragon. You know what I'm saying? Like that like right away. It's like it's, I mean, I'm not saying like you 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 don't ride your barber, you know what I mean? That's crazy. I'm not going that far. But y'all get what I'm saying out there. Like that spiritual connection bond. And I had to tell him, when you go to a new barber for the first time, you gotta let him know. I was like, hey bro, I got a weird shaped head. You know what I'm saying? So so you know, sometimes we gotta make the cut look a little dip, you know. Just just go ahead, feel it, feel the head, feel the head, get familiar with it, get familiar with the map. All right. And then we can talk about it and move forward, man. I chopped off all my facial hair. I shaved cleanly everything. I don't know why I did it. He was, he was, it was, I was in the chair. It was just spur of the moment thing. But everyone was, like, making fun of me for it. I, I sent Cam a picture uh, just as a joke in, like, a private uh, message group or whatever. Uh, literally just me and him and the white Cam. And, and this, this, uh, this motherfucker right here, he literally posts that picture for 400,000 people to see on Instagram. And I got roasted all over the internet. People were calling me Arthur. People say I look like the turtle from uh, from Franklin. People say I look like the turtle from the, the Tootsie Pop commercial uh, with my smooth face. It was horrible. I was getting roasted. But uh, shout out to all y'all, man, because I, I'm, I, I never forget that. I'm going to go through them comments. And one day, I'm going to get on. I'm going to get on y'all. I will get on y'all. Gang, I will get on y'all. What else is going on, man? I got a, I got some fortune cookies here, too, by the way. Um, I want to open up some fortune cookies live on the air to see. Uh, maybe I should do it at the end of the episode. What else? I got to maybe I have like two more things that I can talk about. Uh, oh, Jamar Neighbors, man. Shout out Jamar. Jamar Neighbors put me on his show. Uh, Jamar and Friends. Jamar, Jamar and his neighbors over at Creek and Cave. And, uh, you know, man... I, I just, I, I'm just really thankful, man. Guys, shows have been going really good for me lately. After having kind of, I would say like a rough, rough month, maybe rough couple weeks, whatever you want to call it. Uh, things are really looking up. So let's see. Oh, dude, somebody told me I look like the Alaskan bullworm from SpongeBob. That really hurt my feelings too, man. You know, but however, a couple of days after the cut, though, it's a, it's, a, it's a cute girl at work. Who I, she works for clear i started talking i started saying hey you know start saying what's up getting familiar she's like oh i love your haircut you look so good i was like oh thank you. I appreciate it. you know i didn't do all that in her face i did it i did it excitingly after i got around the corner because <laughs> i have some decorum uh but i don't know it's always exciting getting compliments as a man man because they're, they're few and far between you know unless you uh uh jason tate i mean channing told him what, whatever nigga um, I really wish I could have went to go Lil Duval Day this year, man. Lil Duval Day was in Jacksonville. It's the July 13th. Shout out to Lil Duval, who's one of my comedy heroes, man. Um, if you don't know who that is, he's literally, he's from Jacksonville. He's been putting on for the city for decades. You've seen him. You've heard his music. You've heard his jokes, probably, for sure. Uh, he's just a national treasure, man. 
And it's inspiring to see because, like, when I first started comedy, I wanted to be just like him. I wasn't making music or nothing in my jokes, but I, I would wear a Jaguar jersey every time I got on stage. Probably the first, like, 25 times I got on stage, I was wearing a Jags jersey just because that's what he was doing, you know? And uh, I was trying, I was thinking of a day to start, little, little Bobby day in the city, you know? <laughs> Bobby's baby, something, you know, what I don't know. <laughs> but, uh,. He had Keith Lee out there, man. He had he had Johnny Dang, a bunch of celebrities. When I went, he had Sexy Red, and uh, I do. I finally have that video footage too. I'm gonna post that on my YouTube channel uh, of, of of my little Duval day, Bobby in the streets, when I was doing some street videos back then, man. Um, so make sure y'all go check that out. And uh, I'm excited. I'm going to New York soon, guys, man. I'm I'm hyped for that too. Uh, it'll be my first time ever in New York. I'm gonna go for the Kill Tony uh, at Madison Square Garden thing and try to get pulled on those. Uh, and see, you know, uh, I'm still working on whatever joke I would do if, if I get pulled, but that would be insane. Do it like I went to all the other arena shows and I really wanted to get pulled. I went to the theater shows, really wanted to get pulled. Uh, it hasn't happened yet in a big stage, uh, but but I am really excited. And you know, who knows? Who knows? Hopefully, I, I had a really good showing this time. I feel like I can't wait for y'all to see that episode. Um, and like I said, I'm going to do a live react to it on YouTube. Um, but but yeah, make sure y'all just you know you know, just keep looking out, keep supporting. Uh, I got some little fortune cookies here that uh, that I want to open before I bounce. Today is Monday, so I got to go downtown and sign up for Kill Tony and for uh, the Comedy Mothership Open Mic. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to open these right here and see what fortune we get. What the, these are some black ass cookies. What the heck? Like I've never seen, or well, the rest of it is orange, but somebody like somebody burnt these unless it's just like different flavors. I don't know. These better be good. If I'm opening these on air and they're not good, I'm going to be so embarrassed. <laughs> but if it's like your career is going to fail tomorrow. <laughs> I'm I'm stitious though. I will believe that bit too. I'd be like, all right, man. I'm never eating a cookie again. Uh let's see, let's see. This one says, Oh, you'll be able to find the right balance of activity and rest for your health. Alright, thanks. Uh <laughs> Hopefully, uh, I don't know. Lucky numbers, 32, 20, 26. I think those, don't those numbers on the back just mean like whatever the next close age you are? That one was kind of underwhelming. I got one more here. That's why I got two, just to see, you know. All right, let's open this last one. Then we'll, uh, we'll skedaddle out of here. Um, thank you guys for listening, coming back to the podcast, uh, wherever you're listening from Spotify, Apple, wherever, uh, YouTube watching this, make sure you let me know so I can make sure, you know, I feed those, uh, feed those algorithms more. Here we go. Here's the last one. Trust that life's challenges are also blessings in disguise. Mm. All right. Now that one of uh, 26, I'm 25 now, 26 is the next. All right. That one, I would say, man, that's a bar. If only, like, I, I, I th I've tried to be as transparent as I could on this podcast with everything that's been going on with me without destroying relationships or without putting myself in worse positions than I already have put myself in here. But things could definitely be a blessing in disguise, you know, kind of getting, um, kind of getting pushed out from some of the other comedy clubs and just for, you know, whether, whether it was by my own fault or whatever, uh, it kind of forced me to, you know, I, I I think I think I have better jokes now. You know, I had good jokes then. I was funny then, but it forced me to hit a different type of of grind for a second. To be like, oh shit, okay, well now I got to go over here and see what's happening over here. And and those opportunity one opportunity led to another where where people actually like you over here in these clubs, and they actually kind kind of you know make something real happen in the, in the industry for you, put you in front of someone who can really help and help you, help you get shit moving or opportunities like open up for rail and. Open it up for Roy Wood Jr. in the theater, man. I, I really don't think that I would have pressed as hard. Or well, I would not even. I, I, I can say that I was not pressing as hard for sure in the grind trenches phase to propel to the next level back then when I was just comfortable and everyone loved me and I wasn't in trouble with anyone. I didn't have any beats. I, I got booked at these places. Um,. I was I was on the road. Or I was not on the road, or whatever. Like just just, 
I, I'm learning a lot of stuff is definitely blessings in disguise, man. And even like working at the airport now, man. Like when I first started this job, just pushing people in wheelchairs, it it felt corny. It felt lame. It felt embarrassing. You know, I'm at this job. Like I'm 26. I mean, I'm, I'm 25. Everyone else I'm working with, 17, 18, 20 years old. You know, whatever. But it turned out that this was the perfect job. I I, I literally sit down. All day. I can sit down all day and write jokes and think of stuff, write in my notebook, watch YouTube, post a video, edit a video. Like, you know, I'm not making I'm not making crazy money, but I I'm I mean I my rent's paid, you know. I'm still making videos, you know, and I it's not like I'm sacrificing work for this or that. I can still I'm I'm doing that in the morning, getting up at five in the morning, working till two o'clock, being tired, still going out at night from you know, whatever, six to six to one in the morning. You know, all that stuff has been a blessing in disguise for me, man. And I know I got some stuff on the horizon. I know I got some stuff coming. I was like, as hard as I've been working, this is the hardest that I've worked since I, I, I would say the first year I started comedy. When I loved, I used to write all the time. I would listen back to every single tape. I would write every single word, sit on the court, every, every single thing. And now sometimes there are some shows that I'm like I I won't I don't I don't have to listen to a set before this I won't prepare I'll just go up there and feel it out you know or or you know but just being in those positions now it's like oh okay this is why I got to get it together because now I'm not in the graces of of these people who will speak up for you and prop you up and and help you propel now I definitely have to keep grinding and put myself in these positions you know so shout out to everybody who's kind of just been holding me down man showing me a lot of love that stuff really really matters and means a lot to me um I swear to y'all 2025 I could really 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 break out you know and, and and you know pop out and show niggas for real um i just got to get these sets together get this writing together and um you know thanks to y'all i'm motivated man i'm out here i'm grinding i got some new stuff cooking i know god got some stuff on my way um my my, my next goal my next big goal i'm really I, I i'm going back to hollywood uh hollywood laugh factory november 24th right now that's my graduation spot for chocolate sundays I, if I, I've done it before, if I do good this time, I get passed into the main show. So, you know, just, just you know, looking forward to opportunities like that that I put myself in and, and I got opportunities like that myself. Nobody, you know, just all that stuff is, is thanks to y'all support me and continuing to listen and, and watch the videos that I'm putting out. So, um, I love you guys. I appreciate you. I got to get downtown so I can sign up for these shows. Um, hopefully I'll be coming to a city near you again, sign up for the VIP list. Let me know where you are, uh, what state you're in, what city you're in. So I can reach out and, and, and you know, try to put something together to come out. Um, Send the podcast to your friends. Send the stand-up playlist on my YouTube to your friends, man. Let people watch the videos. Run it up when you go to sleep. If you got it in the background, just throw the videos on. It helps me out a lot. Uh, I love you guys. I appreciate you. Uh, your boy, Bobby. Uh, until next time, I'm out of here, man. Peace.